Hi. Now here we have an example then on the remainder theorem. And uh, if you're not sure of the remainder theorem, just go on my website examsolutions.net where there's some tutorials on that. But what we've got here is that f of x equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 3, where a and b are constants. And given that when f of x is divided by x plus 2, the remainder is 7, we've got to show that 2a minus b equals 6. And then later we're given also that when f of x is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 4. And we've got to go on to find the value of a and the value of b. So if you'd like to give this a go, if you haven't tried it already, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, let's see how we do this. Well, first of all, as I said earlier, it's based on the remainder theorem. And you can see tutorials on this on my website. But briefly, we've got this, that if f of x is divided by x plus alpha, then the remainder is given by f of minus alpha. So what we've got here is that f of x is divided by x plus 2, alpha being the 2 here. So in other words, f of minus 2 must equal this remainder of 7. So that's our starting point here. We've got essentially f of minus 2 equals 7. And that means that we need to just substitute minus 2 into here. So we've got, therefore, minus 2 cubed plus a multiplied by minus 2 squared plus b times minus 2 plus 3. This gives us our remainder, which is 7. And if we tidy this up, we therefore have minus 2 cubed, which is minus 8. We've got here minus 2 squared, which is 4, so that's going to be plus 4a. And then minus 2b plus 3, and that equals 7. So all we need to do now is just group up our terms. If we group them up, we've got minus 8 plus 3, which is minus 5. Add that to both sides, add 5 to both sides, and you're left with 4a minus 2b equals 7 plus 5, which is 12. Now I can divide all the terms by 2, and I get, therefore, 2a minus b equals 6. And that's what we had to show. Now in the next part, we're given also then that when f of x is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 4. So doing really much the same as what we did here using the remainder theorem, only this time we're talking about f of 1. f of 1 gives us 4. So therefore we have f of 1 equals 4. Substitute 1 throughout f of x here, and you've got 1 cubed, which we know is 1, plus 1 squared times a is just going to give me a, plus b times 1, which is b, plus the 3 equals our remainder here of 4. And if we tidy this up, we therefore have a plus b equals, well, 1 add 3 is 4, 4 take away 4 is 0. So we now have two equations in A and B. So it's going to be a case of doing simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is just number these equations. We'll call this one equation 1, and we'll call this one that we just found equation 2. And I can see that if I was to add the two equations, then what's going to happen is that the b's will cancel one another out. So if we do 1 add 2, what we've got is 2a plus this a is 3a. And the b's are going to cancel. And then we get 6 plus 0, which is 6. And if we divide by both sides by 3, then a is clearly 2. And all I've got to do now is just substitute this value 
back into one of the equations. So I'm going to say sub a equals 2 into, say, equation 2. And you can see that because a plus b equals 0, we're going to have 2 plus b equals 0, leading on to, it follows that b equals minus 2. So in summary then, therefore a equals 2 and b equals minus 2. All right.